All right, let's go to the next slide, Ash. All right, so our agenda today, we're gonna to cover the Theo protocol overview, our mission, our protocol leadership funding. Just to give you an idea, some of you may have been on these community updates before. Um, some of you are new. Welcome to everybody that's joining us today. That's gonna be what we're gonna start with. And then after that, we're gonna introduce the Theo DAO, how we've um, shifted our internal structure um, to more of a DAO, our active projects. And each active project within the DAO that creates the FIO internal ecosystem, we're going to give updates on what's happening on each one of those. There's so much to cover. So we're going to, we're going to go through those and talk about all the things that are happening within those different DAO projects. And then some, we'll look forward at the FIO protocol or what could potentially be to come. One of the exciting things I've seen since being involved with FIO is all of the new use cases and implementations that have, that have come about. At just whether it's from the internal team or as we talk to potential integration partners of how the FIO protocol can be used to make using cryptocurrency easier, uh, make it frictionless, and also um, just different different points within the you know the ecosystem, both internally and externally, where utilizing FIO can make user experiences easy and seamless. And then at the end, we'll have an open convo for Q and A, how to get involved. Um, and I would encourage everybody on here, if you're not already connected with us, definitely connect. If you look in the top right corner, um, you can follow our Medium blog, you can join our Telegram channel, and follow our Twitter at JoinFeo. So let's go to the next screen, Ash. All right, so we believe usability drives adoption. This is, this is not just our belief, it's been proven time and time again with technology. Our mission is simple, make crypto easy. Now there's so many different use cases for cryptocurrency and blockchain, which drives so many use cases for the FIO protocol. We wanna make all blockchain transactions across every crypto application easy, error-free, secure, and in a decentralized and self-sovereign manner. Um, if you've used cryptocurrency before, most I, I would guess everybody on this call or most people on this call have done that already. You know some of the pain points of sending, receiving cryptocurrency, making those transactions, or even trying to help onboard a new user and help them get started. Uh, there's a lot of pain points. And if you look back in history, technology adoption improves or accelerates as the usability gets easier. And, and you know, we can talk about most recent when we talk about the, the rise of the Internet um, from the early 90s to the late 90s and how those usability layers made uh, really accelerated adoption. And we can even go all the way back to the automobile. You think about adoption of that once once paved roads were implemented. Um, and and that that adoption sped up because uh, there was better infrastructure. And it's the same concept here with when it comes to FIO, our protocol, and our core belief, which is making crypto easy. All right, next slide, Ash. All right, so FIO protocol is Web three usability. So chain agnostic, um, just it's in our name, foundation for inner wallet operability. Um, we work across all other chains. Um, to make no matter what chain, what protocol, what what cryptocurrency you're trying to use, what blockchain project you're trying to build on, we we can uh, we are interoperable with those. So handling workflow data, confirmations, um, both you know before the transaction, after the transaction, and it's a wallet layer solution as well that integrates into end user applications, but doesn't need to be integrated with the blockchain. So what that means is we're a usability layer that allows us to interop you know be interoperable with all chains but we don't have to insert code or be programmed into these other chains the way we operate and the field protocol we're a delegated proof of stake chain it's very fast and low cost it's perfect for what we're doing with FIO um, sending data being able to send transactions and you want that that usability layer to not slow down the overall transaction of the process and that's 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 why we're structured that way uh, and we have a fully open source code base as well. All right, next slide, Ash. So what is the FIO protocol feature? Now, you see we have our, our FIO crypto handle, which is the core of, of what we do. Uh, it allows you to create easy human readable uh, crypto addresses that replace those long string wallet addresses. It makes sending cryptocurrency as easy as sending an email and it reduces the potential for errors, mistakes, um, you know, in the past, it's been people have made mistakes, sent, you know, sending to the wrong address, copy and paste errors, QR code uh, corruption, any of those things that cause somebody to send crypto to the wrong address or to be gone forever. 
Um, but now it's, it's when you're sending crypto, you want to make sure you're selecting the right chain. Um, so that crypto handle, which is in the format of username at domain, is an NFT as well. So, so someone, um, that is something that you can own, you can transfer ownership um, with that. We you know most people think of NFTs as these, what we see where it's an image or a piece of art that's structured, but your crypto handle is an NFT. It's a nested NFT because that domain is also an NFT to where you can, you are, you have the ability to register custom domains that can represent your individual personality, your name, your personal brand, company name, company brand. You can get those. You can use them yourself. If you're the owner of the domain, you can also make it public to where anybody can register crypto handles using that domain. A lot of use cases for that as well. As you see the rise of crypto payments, uh, really just start to really integrate into the existing world, not just those that are already working in the crypto space. Feel request allows you to send, it, send a decentralized and encrypted payment request. It's peer to peer. You can use it for order, court, order cart, which means um, I can send this request. And the request itself is similar to like a PayPal or Venmo type request. Uh, and I use that analogy because most people have either sent payment requests on PayPal, Venmo, or Cash App. This is Imagine taking that, putting it in a de decentralized protocol that allows you to request any cryptocurrency. When the user receives that request, they just have to open their wallet uh, that's enabled via request, and they can approve that order, which has been used recently by some of our integration partners that uh, incorporate crypto payments uh, for uh, payment processing, to where when you're going to check out and pay for your cart, you can send yourself a, a, FIO, a FIO request which then allows you to open your open your wallet, approve that request, and your card is paid for. A lot of use cases here. When I was doing the demo for that in one of our integration partners, it struck me right then that that was easier than paying with a credit card. And that's the type of making crypto easy. That that's the type of technology advancements that's they're gonna that's gonna drive crypto adoption further. You can use it for invoicing as well. If 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 I send you an invoice for payment, uh, and then I want to send a, a payment request, I can reference that invoice. By including a little bit of data in that field request, which is available to put um, a little bit amount of data information as to why you're sending the request, whether it's uh, invoice payment or reimbursement for dinner. Um, so our field data secure cross chain metadata for record keeping, uh, like I just mentioned, notes, order ID, invoice. It could be a simple note reimbursement for dinner, right? I take I take someone on the team out to dinner, um, and uh, you know they they end up covering my dinner and I want to reimburse them for their amount um, or I want them to reimburse me for an amount owed to me. I can send a fee request or they can send me a request depending on who's requesting from who. Uh, and then using those crypto handles for FIO NFT signatures uh, is, is huge because it's a cryptographic self-sovereign solution um, that, that can help prevent forgeries. And it, it is a big problem. When you look at the amount of NFTs and you pull the data from the industry um, across platforms that are the NFTs that marketplaces are having to remove um, because they're forgeries, because they're fakes, because the user doesn't have the, the rights to use that image or video, or whatever is associated with that NFT. Uh, FIO NFT signatures allows you to use that crypto handle to map a digital signature to an NFT built on any chain. So it doesn't matter what chain the NFT is created, you can map an NFT signature to it. Down the road, you will be able to, down the road, that user or, or someone's going to buy that NFT on a secondary market, they can go to a verification tool and see that, okay, I know that, that this original artist or brand or creator minted these NFTs under this crypto handle, and I can see a signature mapped to that crypto handle. And if I don't see that signature there, then I know, okay, they were minting with that signature, that could be a forgery. So it can prevent forgeries, um, and, and, and which gives the buyer and the seller reassurance that, that they're transacting uh, with the adequate asset and not not a um, not a forgery, but it also stores a copy of that NFT's metadata on chain. All right, so next next slide, Ash. All right, the FIO token FIO protocol is fueled by the FIO token um, utility. It enables payment on FIO blockchain fees for all chain transactions. So whether you're registering crypto handles, registering uh, custom domains, sending FIO requests, it allows you that is powered by the FIO token. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, being that we are a proof of stake chain, uh, the field token allows you to participate in governance for voting for block producers and the foundation board. And then you can also earn staking rewards for participating in that governance 
um, shared rewards via voting for governments and staking. So you're you're able to stake your FIO tokens and earn a yield for participating in governance of our protocol. All right, next slide. All right, so our economic model, um, decentralized and tokenized with the FIO token. Um, all of the chain income comes from transaction fees attributed to the community. 60% of the fees go to the block producer, 25% go to token stakers, 10% goes to integrators plus a potential bonus, and then 5% goes to the foundation to continue uh, the work to continue to develop the FIO, uh, FIO protocol, FIO ecosystem. All right, next slide. All right, some of our key wins this year. Uh, we launched staking at the beginning of this year, currently averaging about a 31% APR. Uh, token holders support chain governance by vote to participate in chain economics. If you use one of our staking partners to stake, it's very simple. You can stake directly from that wallet um, and, and participate in, in those fees. The longer you stake, the more potential you have to earn those staking rewards. It is variable, that APR, because it is based on the number of users that are staking. Uh, we also launched our dashboard, the field dashboard 1.0 launch. Uh, I'll give you a demo of that when we get, get here shortly in, in, the, uh, in the slides. I'll show you how that operates, how you can utilize the dashboard, both from a user end and how our integration partners could potentially, our potential integration partners could actually use that dashboard to, um, to integrate the field protocol into their platform. Um, and so, so that allows you one single platform for crypto handle domain registrations, um, and you can use it in non FIO integrated products. So if I'm using a wallet that hasn't enabled FIO protocol yet, but I want to map a FIO crypto handle to that, I can do that by using the dashboard and also staking and voting, participating in governance from that FIO dashboard account. We've had over 290,000 new FIO crypto handles registered, 780,000 total since our launch of the, of the project, uh, which is boasting about 100% year over year growth. So we're seeing an acceleration in those registrations of field crypto handles as more and more people are realizing the the ease of use and the usability it makes using cryptocurrency easy uh just this year we brought in over 28 new integration partners um we have 60 plus integrations of all types currently live or in progress uh with 130 percent year over year growth rate in integrations onboarded we'll cover that there's a part of this uh presentation where we'll go more into uh our ecosystem and those integration partners and we launched the FIO DAO, which is project focused. Uh, FIO operations are now project versus per person focused. Um, it allows, it grants greater contributor autonomy and better visibility to KPIs and ROI. So our FIO structure, we are operating as a DAO. Anyone can make a proposal to the DAO, um, to, to the steering committee, to the board to uh, have that approved to work on, you know, in the FIO protocol. And then we have a, a good way to track that whole ecosystem where everybody works together. All right, next slide, Ash. All right, so this is our foundation leadership board. Uh, we, as you can see, the, the whole point of this is to show you just the, the experience, those that are involved that are really driving uh, the field protocol forward, our board. We have Paul Peewee from Edge, uh, Paul Sakala from Garda, Brent Tradum from Coinbase, um, Han, Ra, Han Rayu from Node One, George Kimionis uh, from Coinomy, David Wynn from Midas Wallet, Luke Stokes, who is on our board and also our steering committee, and Glenn Kennedy, um, we all, our steering committee, Luke Stokes, 15-year uh, tech and blockchain vet, David Gold, 25-year tech entrepreneur and VC, um, Pavo Master Alerts, 25-year uh, product leader, Ash Howe, heading up marketing, and Eric Butts has been a technical leader. Um, those, those are our, that's our core foundation of the field leadership, which gives you an idea of what is really driving um, driving the field protocol. Uh, obviously, there's a lot more contributors behind the scenes that that um, that are also contributing to that. But this is our core leadership group. So next slide, Ash. All right. So right here, I'm going to turn it over to David Gold. David's going to give us a financial update and more about what's happening from the financial side of the FIO Foundation. David, over to you. Great. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so quick update on the the. Uh, foundation's financials. Uh, just a reminder, the foundation is a nonprofit uh, Cayman entity. The, the entire project operates as a DAO, and there'll be more discussion about the specifics of that operation uh, later in this presentation. Um, the foundation is funded, as was highlighted earlier, directly from the blockchain. It receives a share 
of the fees that are paid to the chain for the utility of the chain. Uh, the chain also is currently minting uh, 150,000 FIO tokens per day for the foundation, which will continue until uh, summer of 2023. Um, so those are the sources of income for the foundation today. Um, and uh, currently the foundation has about 9 million in assets. It has been very conservative in managing its assets. 50% um, or more of the assets have uh, consistently been in stable coins. Uh, the value of those assets obviously are down given the downturn in the entire market um, from where they were six months ago, uh, eight months ago. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, very healthy asset, assets there. And currently, when you look at the spend rate of the foundation versus its income, it's uh, it's burning about $250,000 a, a month, which gives it a very long runway um, for operations. Um, further cuts certainly can be made without uh, uh, really hurting the project significantly. Uh, at this time, you know, that's not being done because of the length of the runway that that still exists. Um, uh, if the crypto winter continues long enough, then uh, then those will certainly be looked at and there are plans in place to, to further extend the runway. So the project's very, very healthy from, uh, from a runway standpoint. Uh, and we'll talk uh, later in this presentation about the strategies that are going to further increase foundation income beyond just the, the, the chain fees uh, that it receives directly from the decentralized blockchain. Next slide. So at this point, we're going to turn it over to Pavo, who's going to walk us through um, the update to our structure here at VO uh, that, that Wayne alluded to before, um, talking through a bit more about the VO DAO that we have launched over the last handful of months. Thank you, Ash. Yeah, so for, the, for those of you who have been following the FIO uh, uh, protocol, we have been making slow and steady progress towards uh, decentralization. So previously, uh, the foundation was funding individual worker proposals who were uh, uh, working uh, directly uh, uh, for the project as individuals and then organizing them into functional uh, areas like marketing or development. With this next step, we're taking uh, uh, things even further and actually organizing the work around specific uh, or worker proposals. Uh, next slide, uh, Ash. So how this works is you obviously uh, have the FIO token holders that are voting on the foundation board members. That part has not changed. And as a reminder, that is an ongoing vote. You can always vote for uh, foundation board members uh, uh, continuously. And uh, that's basically who is in, in control of then appointing the steering committee, which uh, we just covered who, who that is. And then the steering committee's role is changing. Previously, it was kind of acting more as a uh, uh, executive uh, uh, committee, if you will, on kind of setting the direction for a lot of the different projects, but it's kind of taking a different role where it's now going to be primarily focusing on publishing the objectives that uh, the foundation wants to accomplish, whatever it's to promote FIO or um, make integration easier or sell more domains or whatever the strategy might be. And there is actually some of those that have been published on the DAO website that I encourage you to uh, check out. And uh, then based on those uh, objectives, actually identify individual worker proposals and then fund them and send uh, set their KPIs, but not necessarily being involved in the day-to-day -day operations of those individual worker proposals. Those are actually now handled by worker proposal leads who then actually recruit and hire the individual workers that are working for that particular team to execute whatever is the objective. And then the steering committee's role uh, really shifts from uh, hands-on uh, operations to monitoring those individual worker proposals and their KPI progress on a monthly and quarterly basis, and then deciding if uh, if it wants to continue funding it. So anybody out there uh, uh, basically can participate in uh, submitting a worker proposal, which is a contained project that says, hey, here's what I'm going to do, here's the budget, uh, and, uh, and then it's really up to them to decide how they're going to accomplish it, who they're going 
to hire and how much they're going to pay the workers and all the details associated with that. So we're hoping that that is going to uh, uh, basically make it easier for anybody to participate uh, because they can come to the steering committee and, and pitch a, a contained worker proposal. I think it's going to give a lot more uh, flexibility to the individual uh, worker proposal leads to, uh, to act uh, in accomplishing those KPIs, whatever, making decisions on who to hire, which contractor to use, which vendor to use, shift things uh, within uh, their budget as they see fit, fit to accomplish the, uh, the the KPIs. So that has started as of uh, June 1. Uh, so we're in month two right now of this transition. And uh, so far, things are looking good. So looking forward to uh, uh, seeing how that develops. And I'm sure we'll be taking further steps into the future Fantastic. Thank you, Pavo. Um, Wayne, I think you're up next if you want to walk us through your worker proposal as worker proposal lead for Dow 238. All right. Thank you, Ash. Yeah. So 238 integration growth, we focus on business development, strategic partnerships that are going to help to grow the FIO ecosystem uh, with integrations. And we've also uh, been kind of looking at it from a different lens, which I'll cover. Uh, wallets and exchanges are a core part of our integration partners, but there's been um, there's just a lot of potential to uh, really get the PO ecosystem out there. So next screen, Ash. All right, so it's more than just wallets. As I just mentioned, more than just wallets and exchanges, there's NFT exchanges. Um, our ecosystem is expanding to include NFT exchanges uh, using the NFT signature utility that I mentioned earlier in this presentation. Uh, so there's a lot of use case there. Uh, NFT exchanges are, are really uh, feeling uh, some of the burden of fakes and forgeries that are being minted on, on platforms that they're then having to go back and take those down, having a system to verify NFT signatures. As we get more brands and creators to utilize signatures, this is going to be a big part of the PO protocol usage. Gaming, gaming has, uh, it, many people feel, is going to be a main driver in the adoption of just in general, the cryptocurrency and blockchain ecosystems. Um, just the, So the ecosystem of Theo is expanding to include Play to earn DeFi gaming platforms with full FIO protocol functionality. Uh, we've been on a lot of calls recently with gaming games that are launching. And those gaming uh, platforms are charred. Their, their biggest issue is, is creating games that are fun to play, easy to play. Um, and people aren't just playing them to earn a yield. Um, but also is the onboarding process of getting those gamers from Web 2 to Web 3 to where they're in this, this ecosystem of blockchain-based gaming and using FIO protocol, FIO crypto handles. Um, those crypto handles can be utilized uh, by gamers to facilitate payments, transfer of assets. NFTs are created in many of these games. So the, the creation and also the transfer of those assets. Uh, but then also you, when you think about these large gaming guilds that are out there, wh whether they're large or small, they can, they can give their members crypto handles as far as creating domains, FIO domains for those guild names and then being able to allow their users to register crypto handles on that. Um, so crypto handles um, are used to manage token and NFT management. Uh, staking, our e ecosystems expanding to include staking platforms. Uh, you're gonna see that there's many different options right now uh, to where you can stake your FIO tokens. And that's gonna continue to evolve as many, many platforms, wallets and exchanges um, really, you know, trying to uh, increase their user base, offering staking features within that wallet, uh, within those exchange wallets, uh, is going to drive increase in their user base. And our, our FIO ecosystem can help with that for those that want to stake the FIO token. And the dashboard impact, which I'll cover a little bit more in the next slide, it enables a much simpler integration path for our partners to where they can simply, uh, we can create a co branded landing page using the dashboard. That will still have their branding, their their logos on when the user is going to register crypto handles or interact with the field protocol. They can use the dashboard uh, instead of having to natively integrate each one of those features and create their own user interface for it. We've already got a user interface created with the field dashboard. So next slide. And with that dashboard, it allows us to onboard more partners. Uh, uh, kind of a business to business approach um, outside of wallets and exchanges. Think about companies, both crypto. And, and traditional companies, brands, artists, influencers, and other organizations, anywhere where they have a customer base, user base, fan base, follower base, that anytime there's digital payments included within there, or NFTs that are being created in exchange, those partners can create 
can become dashboard partners to where they can they can link to a co-branded uh, landing page to the dashboard using their uh, their branding and their whether it's their users, customers, followers, whatever are able to register their own domains, register their own crypto handles, and that's going to drive um, you know crypto handle registrations, domain sales, and increase the reach awareness of FIO and drive more on-chain usage, which is the ultimate goal is to continue to drive that and, and make a, a more and more robust ecosystem within uh, the field protocol. So B2B partners can drive their executives, employees, fans, customers, communities, registered uh, field domains and crypto handles, which will give them the ability to personalize that. Uh, when you think about it, similar to how email addresses work, right? Some Once someone gets an email address, uh, they own that, it's theirs. So with the field crypto handle, your, your identity for digital payments is similar to, is going to be an important part of, of people's lives. Payments represent transfer of value, um, transactions that are happening. And as we go to a more decentralized peer-to-peer -peer space, um, getting more and more users to register crypto handles is going to drive utilization of, of not only the FIO ecosystem, but cryptocurrency in general. So next slide. All right, Ash, I think, was someone else going to cover this or did you want me to cover this one? I think either way, uh, maybe you can just uh, yeah. speak to our ecosystem. Oh, and still online, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I realize, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. So this is our current ecosystem right now. Obviously, we can't show all 60 partners on the screen, but highlighting some of the top ones, mentioning our focus on NFTs and gaming. You can see Air NFTs, which is an NFT platform, TCG World, which is a metaverse platform. Uh, Vera Labs and Mintverse, both in the NFT space, and SecuX, which is a hardware wallet, but they also have an NFT hardware wallet as well. And then some of our um, some of our prominent integrations as well: Edge Wallet, Opera, Opera Wallet. You know, Opera is is a huge name. It's been a big driver of crypto handles for us. And you can see uh, just kind of where that ecosystem is growing here, as we can continue to get more and more aware whether these partners have integrated support for the field token, support for staking. Or many of our features of field protocol allowing you to send uh, crypto using a field crypto handle, receive, and then also to register crypto handles. Um, some of the, you know, these these partners have integrated at some point. Each each partner has integrated different features of the protocol, um, but it, our ecosystem is continuing growing. Um, you know, expect this number to greatly increase by uh, by the time our next community update is. We're starting to get a lot of traction and a lot of different use cases that are emerging from um the the FIO protocol and our integration partners right, that's it yep and i would just add to that if you guys want to see the full list and uh the full details on each of right. the partners that we're working with uh please go to fioprotocol.com uh or sorry fioprotocol.io forward slash ecosystem and you'll be able to see the full view of of all of the work that we're doing and how we're growing our integration um network so I think next up is Eric, who will walk us through DAO 52, uh, which speaks to the work that we're doing to uh, develop and maintain the core fiat chain. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, so yeah, I'll be talking about DAO 52, the core uh, fiat chain. So this is focused on all things centered around the um, development for our core chain and the system contracts that run on that chain. Uh, so just a bit of background on FIO, we're layer one, uh, we're an early fork of EOSIO, obviously with some key differences being we're not an open contract platform uh, and we're a fee-based system. We are a delegated proof of stake chain and we have 30 plus uh, block producers out there that actually uh, run and maintain, serve as the foundation for both our test net and our main net and kind of control um, uh, all the software updates that go on to that chain. Um, so here you just have the usual list of what you might expect from a development group, uh, definitely focus on strategy and research and the core chain development mentioned all the QA, the release, uh, and the system testing. I think one important thing to note is as we move, as we try to move into this more DAO system, and we've been doing this from mainnet launch, really, it's how do we engage kind of more of the community development, um, community uh, developers out there into our system, right? So we have a set of core developers that have been there from Genesis, but we also are starting to attract um, more external developers, and that requires a different set of DAO-based systems to integrate that um, all of their code, make sure it is secure, make sure it is well-tested, and make sure it fits into kind of the FIO DAO model of software. Um, you want to go to the next slide, Ash? 
So our KPIs, um, again, what you might expect in terms of QA and bugs. Uh, security, over the past year, we actually finished um, a key piece of our security um, playbook, uh, which we are starting to uh, roll out as well. We've done, um, uh, obviously, audits of our contracts as well, but this security covers a wider view uh, beyond just the security audits of our core code. Um, and involves all of our systems and tooling as well. Um, the release management becomes interesting when you start to move into a DAO system. Uh, I'll talk about one of our um, releases, the community um, domain marketplace, uh, which is a community developed uh, feature. Um, and then performance is coming. Um, that's partly focused on integrating. As I mentioned, we're a fork of EOSIO and we like to leverage all of the expertise and development that's going into EOSIO with the um, EOS um, Network Foundation, um, doing a lot of work and putting a lot of money into that as well as we want to leverage that. Um, and as I mentioned, the community engagement has been a, a, a good and interesting piece of our development. Uh, next slide. Uh, the last year um, or so has been focused on what I'll call large large app, uh, features, uh, the first one being the staking release that happened occurred in early 2022. A lot of um, development went behind that, um, uh, as well as the domain marketplace. That's a community built and developed um, and QA'd um, feature that we uh, integrated into it. So all of um, FIO is all system contracts. We're not an open contract platform. So our ability to pull in a new contract to support the um, buying and selling and escrow of domains from a third party um, was launched in Q2 there. Um, uh, you'll see FIPS there, like FIP32, FIP33. We work on FIO improvement proposals. So anyone can propose a new feature to FIO. Um, and as those, those will work through a process of first approval and then move into the development uh, phase to get released to uh, testnet and mainnet. And so you'll see uh, quite a few uh, FIPS. There's a whole um, GitHub repository that lists all the FIPS that we've released and the status of those um, as well. So a few, few other minor FIPS there listed. Yeah. So next slide. Um, What's coming up? Um, Q3 here, the big focus is on domain and token wrapping. This is really to support um, uh, how, how do we enable our users who have been asking this for a long time to leverage their domains um, across not just the FIO chain, but out into be able to trade them on things, um, other domain uh, or other NFT exchanges out there. So what domain wrapping will allow you to do is wrap to first Polygon um, is the, the main focus there. Um, obviously, the domain marketplace uh, released earlier is going to be a key player as well to allow users to uh, trade and list their domains for sale. Uh, as well, we will be enabling token wrapping onto um, Ethereum uh, as a WFIO, a wrapped FIO token. So that those are very, again, another large uh, development um, initiative that we're finishing up here and hopefully rolling out. It actually just released to testnet uh, yesterday and hopefully we'll be going out to uh, mainnet in late August or early September, both of those wrapping um, features. Uh, and then again, some FIPS uh, token locking associated with the ability to, a lot of our FIPS are uh, enable the support of integration as well. So, you know, aside from the core chain and contract code, we also have all of the SDKs, the libraries, the services uh, that allow you know, external third parties to create transactions and submit those to the chain and its ability to access all the data that is on the chain for things like crypto handle lookups um, and access to um, the domain features as well. Uh, what's happening in Q4? So EOS, as I mentioned, uh, the EOS Network Foundation, there's a lot of work going on for the core chain. We need, we are going to be pulling in the latest uh, software that will uh, uh, mainly focus on improvements to performance. Uh, that'll make actually the chain actually be able to process a lot more transactions per block, which will be great for us. Uh, as we start to scale up. And then there's just a bunch of other tooling as well that's coming out from EOSIO. Um, uh, the FIPS there, again, there's a there's a slew of uh, improvements that we continuously roll out. A lot of these have to do with um, key management uh, that help our integrators that they've been asking for. Um, so I don't think I need to dig into those too much. And I think that might be it, Ash. Thanks, Eric. Yep. 
I think we're going to jump over to Pavo next to walk us through DAO 39, uh, which speaks to the dashboard. And we will follow this up with a very brief demo of the dashboard that Wayne will help us uh, help walk us through. Thank you, Ash. Yeah, so the FIO dashboard uh, is basically a project that was intended to build a reference implementation of the FIO protocol. Obviously, FIO protocol is intended for uh, any wallet or exchange or any integrator out there to use freely uh, to make the usability of their products uh, better. Uh, but we wanted to also create a uh, tool that anybody can use uh, at, in order to access the FIO functionality. So it's uh, built as a fully non-custodial uh, wallet that hosts the uh, uh, private key, but in a way that it's uh, fully controlled by the user, not the application. And it access a lot of the uh, uh, functionality of the FIO protocol. So the objectives of, of the project uh, it was to design, build, and host the product, uh, create a roadmap, and continually enhance uh, the product in order to accomplish the KPIs. And I'll talk about those in a second. And also conduct user research uh, to improve the product uh, uh, by just looking at and interacting with how users uh, um, use the product. It also includes re maintaining the registration side, which is uh, widely used today by many partners to register FIO crypto handles for their users. Next slide, Ash. So the KPIs uh, is basically increasing the uh, the profit generated by uh, by the project. So it's a pretty expensive project. Uh, it's building an, an entire application from scratch. So we're looking uh, for ways to save money for the foundation. So to reduce the uh, cost it takes to uh, build and maintain the dashboard. And we're hoping to accomplish that by uh, by generating sales of, of FIO domains primarily. Uh, obviously, uptime, making sure it runs and uh, creating registrations of the FIO crypto handles. Next slide. Uh, so what we've accomplished so far is we've launched the uh, dashboard, as you will see here uh, shortly in a demo. It's out there. It is working. You can use it to register uh, PO handle and domain. And not only that, you can also use it to accomplish a lot of the features of the FIO protocol, like ability to manage your domain, set it private or public, transfer ownership, uh, map your FIO crypto handle to, to uh, other crypto public addresses or NFTs, add bundles to it, uh, send and receive tokens and FIA requests, respond to FIA requests that are inbound uh, and set the corresponding uh, uh, FIA data. We've also added recently ability to stake FIA. Um, there's also email notifications that I think is a pretty interesting uh, uh, feature set, uh, especially for those that have uh, FIA domains uh, so that they can actually receive notifications when, uh, when they are up for renewal. And uh, the FIA dashboard will also support a FIA domain and, and uh, token wrapping and unwrapping, which is uh, coming uh, soon. And lastly, partners, we're actually building out the FIO dashboard to allow integration with other partners so that they can actually also have a co-branded version of the FIO dashboard available for, for their users. Next slide. And in terms of the roadmap, what we're currently working on is the ability to uh, support payment using other forms of payment. So right now you only can pay using the FIO tokens, uh, but we'll actually be rolling out hopefully soon here the ability to pay with uh, credit card and crypto and potentially other uh, payment platforms out there. We're going to be continuing to do user testing. Uh, and implementing all the advanced analytics to help us understand better how the users are using the product. And we're really gonna be focusing on uh, enabling the domain sales. So one of the things, for example, that we're uh, uh, rolling out is the ability to register the domain for multiple years. Uh, so on chain, you can register it for a one year, but uh, through the product, you will actually be able to just with a single transaction uh, register it. So your domain is valid for more than just one year. Um, uh, we're also looking at Opera browser integration for signing. So right now the keys are kind of stored in this uh, uh, decentralized uh, uh, self-custody wallet, but op Opera uh, browser is currently building FIO uh, signing capabilities into their crypto browser. So we plan to leverage that as, uh, as, a, as a way to interact with the dashboard as well and also uh, integrating with Marketplace and a bunch of other things that are still being uh, considered and thought about uh, uh, for inclusion in the roadmap. Thanks, Pavo. Um, Wayne, do you want to try and take ownership and, and share your screen so you can kick us off with a, a quick demo here? Sure. 
give me one second. So I got to stop your share. And I'll just share the screen. And Ash, just give me a confirmation in a second if you can see my screen. I sure can. All right. So this is the FIO dashboard. Uh, this is the main screen. It's a simple and seamless way to utilize a FIO protocol. From the dashboard, you can see from the main page, before I even log in, I have the ability to register crypto handles. I can select a couple of public domains that anybody can register on, or I can add my own custom domain, and then I can type in what I would want that username to be. Uh, you can also register custom domains. So let me show you from a logged in feature. So now I'm logged in. This is I'm managing my wallet here. As Pavel mentioned, you control the private keys of this wallet as a user. I have the ability to see current crypto handles that I've registered. Uh, within this dashboard, I can register a new crypto handle. I can register a FIO domain. Uh, I can also go to my tokens that are in my wallet, uh, and I have the ability to stake those tokens uh, or use those tokens to purchase domains, purchase uh, custom crypto handles. Um, I can also manage my domains here. Uh, see, I have this one I've made, which is private. I have the ability to change that to public, which would allow anybody to register a crypto handle using that domain. I can register additional crypto handles using that. And I also have the ability to renew whenever it expires, kind of lets me know uh, when the expiration of those is happening. Um, and I can kind of see, I can also transfer ownership. If I want to transfer ownership of this domain to someone else or to another uh, private key, I can send it just as I mentioned before, this is NFT I can send. Uh, and same thing with crypto handles, I can manage those crypto handles. Each crypto handle comes with 100 bundle transactions. I can purchase more. Uh, for $2 worth of FIO tokens. And this is also where I can sign NFTs using uh, using this. So if I'm a creator and I make this crypto handle public, I can come here to sign that NFT or do a FIO request if I want to request funds from someone. So there's a lot of functionality built into the FIO dashboard uh, that makes it super simple, easy to use, um, and you can manage it all from one place. So that is going to be it for the dashboard demo. All right, Ashley, you're able to go back and share now. Let's see. It says host disabled participant screen sharing. So that may be you. All right. I'll make you the host. Thank you. Okay, perfect. All right. Are you guys able to see the presentation again? Yes, we can. Perfect. All right. So next up, I believe, is Pavo again to walk us through DAO 33, um, speaking a bit further to token and domain wrapping. All right, thank you, uh, thank you, Ash. So uh, Eric mentioned a little bit about the uh, uh, wrapping of of domains and tokens. This is something that is uh, uh, being built. We've uh, spent a lot of uh, energy and focus in trying to uh, develop this functionality. Uh, it's not easy to build because uh, this is actually a fully uh, decentralized uh, uh, wrapping uh, infrastructure, which honestly very few projects out there. Uh, uh, offer. So a lot of the wrapping solutions that you see, a lot of the bridges that you see out there uh, in the industry are, most of them are actually centralized solutions that are run by a single uh, company or an entity versus uh, uh, what we've built is we've built this functionality that then can be adopted by our community of block producers to uh, to actually uh, run a fully decentralized wrapping infrastructure. Uh, so we're actually very excited to uh, be able to uh, to launch this, bring this to market, uh, uh, which will uh, primarily allow us to uh, make FIO domains portable to other chains. Uh, the 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 chain that uh, initially. Uh, the BPs are going to be launching is going to be Ethereum for the tokens and Polygon, which is Ethereum uh, layer two for uh, domains. Uh, and that was primarily for, for, for cost uh, reasons, because obviously the transactions on Ethereum uh, sometimes tend to be pretty high. So in order to make uh, transfers of domains uh, on other chains cheaper, uh, Polygon is probably a, a, a great solution uh, here. So the, the goals are really to coordinate and build this software, release it to the market, coordinate it with oracles and custodians, which are uh, uh, the, the BP community and block producer community, and make sure that you know any maintenance to the software uh, is, is done. And then hopefully accomplish listing of the uh, 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 domains on, on the other platforms like OpenSeas and kind of creating a marketplace there where the actual 
uh, owners of the domains can uh, can can list it there, and then potentially work with any other uh, open um, protocols for decentralized exchanges and see it might, if that, they might be interested in enabling uh, uh, the uh, WFIO token, which is the uh, the wrapped FIO token uh, on uh, on their on their exchanges. Uh, the KPIs, average time to wrap FIO domain, average time to wrap FIO tokens, that's something that uh, the project will be monitoring to, to see if there is any potential uh, improvements that can be made. And uh, also seeing how many FIO tokens are being uh, uh, traded on the decentralized exchanges and how many uh, FIO domains are being traded on, uh, on some of those NFT marketplaces out there. Uh, the, the roadmap, it's pretty straightforward. We've been busy uh, building this functionality for, uh, for several months now. Hopefully it's gonna launch here uh, soon. Uh, and uh, like I mentioned, uh, the, uh, the goal is to, to list uh, the domains or enable the listing of the domains on OpenSeas uh, and enable the, the, the pro provision of FIA token uh, liquidity to the uh, decentralized exchanges. Awesome, thank you, Pavo. So let's see. Uh, up next is DAO 55 marketing, which I will walk us through. Um, so on the marketing side, we have been building up the team over the last uh, almost a year at this point, um, pretty, pretty aggressively. But at the same time, we've been heavily focused on what I'll call um, primarily a non-paid organic strategy, meaning um, we've been trying to uh, very heavily build out our community and social channels and leverage uh, that community and that social reach um, as sort of a foundation to really grow uh, brand awareness for, for the FIO, for FIO protocol. Um, looking forward, we have four primary goals overall. Uh, the first being to build brand awareness. Uh, the second to be uh, the second being growing new user acquisition, uh, driving protocol adoption, so uh, helping to facilitate and drive actual utilization of the protocol, and then the fourth goal will be to help support the sale of custom domains, um, which I think a handful of people have alluded to uh, earlier on in this in this conversation. The way that we will be measuring performance and progress against those goals are with a set of about six or so primary KPIs. Now, this list does not adequately speak to um, the full set of secondary KPIs that, that we will be looking at. Uh, the way that we've been building out our marketing program has been very data-driven, very analytics-driven. Um, so we are, of course, looking at uh, indicators beyond this, but our primary KPIs will be uh, FIO crypto handle registrations, the volume thereof, um, the amount of social followers, the amount of social reach that we're achieving across all of our different platforms, um, total number of custom domain purchases, and then the cost per acquisition per uh, custom domain sale, um, engagement. So, I mean, the multiple different sub metrics beneath that, you know, impressions, clicks, um, retweets, reshares, et cetera. Uh, and then users to site, both from a perspective of returning users and new users to site. Uh, 2022 to date, in terms of how we have been performing against these uh, primary KPIs, um, as mentioned earlier in, in the presentation, um, Jan 1st to about yesterday, we've seen a little over 260,000 new registrations that have been tied back to some sort of marketing activity, whether that's been a dedicated utilization campaign or tied back to um, some of the work that we've been doing around integration announcement, announcements, partner integration announcements. Um, this is about 66% higher than we had seen versus the preceding period. So I guess that would be June to December or so. Um, on the social side, we've seen 18,000 new followers, which is up 710%. Some of these deltas are a little, um, going to be a little inflated for the time being because we've really been focused on ramping up over the last, you know, uh, eight to 12 months. Uh, so we're, we're starting to see um, quite a bit of traction in that regard, but we will expect this to start to kind of like level out um, over the next six to 12 to 18 months or so. Um, on the domain side, we have not yet started to pursue a strategy or execute a strategy uh, for domain sales, but that will be coming soon. Uh, so at this point, we don't have any performance metrics to report against custom domain purchases or associated CPA. Um, and then on the engagement side, 
we have seen about a 30% increase in the amount of impressions um, period over period, about an 80% increase in the amount of engagements period over period, and then a 40% increase on engagement rate. All right, so last piece, uh, new users to site, uh, and then sessions, again, uh, deltas here are a little bit inflated, um, but that's just been, been uh, a factor of us putting some additional uh, processes in place to make sure that the promotional material that we are putting out there is focused on driving users uh, back to site and really creating a full path to conversion. In terms of where we are going, so, um, we are, as I think Wayne really mentioned, working hard to scale the FIA protocol uh, to new sectors, be that you know NFTs or um, gaming, et cetera. So our work is really focused on, especially with all of the kind of like upcoming technical um, improvements on our roadmap, uh, really focused on uh, building FIA protocol to be the industry standard uh, to make easier blockchain transactions for every crypto platform, regardless of, you know, whether it's a wallet, an exchange, et cetera. Some specific exploration areas that we have been pursuing and are actively pursuing at this point. Um, these are the, I guess, primary four. So the first being web resolution of FIA domains. Um, you can think about this as decentralized DNS. Um, uh, building out functionality uh, within the FIO crypto handle to actually have that FIO crypto handle resolve to a web address um, so that those crypto handles could be used effectively as URLs. Um, we are also working on exploration of verified FIO crypto handles, which would attach attestations to you know, a, a given FIO crypto handle to help um, elevate the, I guess, authenticity to a certain extent of those FIA crypto handles, similar to you know, verified email, um, verified public address uh, uh, across multiple chains, et cetera. Um, working on exploring the opportunity to potentially extant, expand our FIA request feature uh, to include the ability to send a request for signature. Um, and then also working on building out uh, effectively an easier path for push notifications in um, the user interfaces of our uh, integration partners, just to make sure that um, when the protocol is integrated, that users of that end product uh, are actually able to, you know, have ready notification of at a, any sort of, you know, transaction-based information, uh, any sort of incoming via request or approved via request, et cetera. So at this point, uh, we will open it up to uh, the broader community in terms of q and I think the best way to do this may be to drop questions into the chat, um, any questions you guys might have. And then the FIO team, we will monitor um, those incoming questions and be happy to address uh, any, any topics um, you'd like to hear more about. We are probably over time or getting very close to it. So, uh, we may only have a handful of minutes, but any questions you might have, please feel free to drop it into the chat. Not exactly seeing any questions coming through, uh, unless David, Wayne, Pavo, Eric, I am missing something on my end. No, I think you're good, Ash. Uh, no questions have come through. As I mentioned before, our Telegram uh, link is up top. Uh, you can go find us on Telegram at Join Fio, um, and you can join there. Feel free to ask questions there, and. Um, the team there will be able to answer any questions if you, anything comes up after this is this broadcast is over. Fantastic. 
Well, thank you everyone for joining us and thank you to the FIO team for all of your support on helping to pull together uh, this community update. We are trying to have these every six or so months. So I would say uh, next one probably scheduled closer toward the end of the year, if not um, early January of 2023. And we will keep everybody updated uh, as we get closer to, to that next, um, to that next meeting. Uh, in the meantime, please visit us via protocol.io. You can join our Discord, you can join our Telegram. Uh, you can learn how to get involved in the project, especially via the new FIO DAO structure uh, on, our, on our JIRA, which is uh, FIO protocol dot atlassian.net. Um, and then if you guys wanna actually check out the protocol in, in the event that you haven't yet, uh, you can get started at FIO protocol.io forward slash join FIO. And I think that's about it. Um, and we are only a couple minutes over. So thank you guys so much for participating and we will uh, talk to you all soon.